in the 78 years since Saudi Arabia launched its flag carrier. Saudi with a plane gifted by U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt, the airline has served largely as a means of ferrying the faithful to Mecca while adhering to the country's strict social rules. No alcohol is served. Women must wear clothing that covers their legs. Cabin crew or human wild can separate women from men who aren't family. And some planes have a prayer nook with a screen, indicating the direction to Mecca as it changes during the flight. And Saudi stands in sharp contrast to regional rivals that have redefined luxury travel with showers and flight butlers and bars, where premium class passengers can recline on a sofa, tumbler of Glen Fittich in hand. Emirates, Qatar Airways, and more recently Turkish Airlines have built mega hubs for travelers between Asia, Europe, Africa, and North America. And their home bases have increasingly become destinations rather than mere transfer points, with beaches, amusement parks, high-end shopping, and sumptuous hotels within easy reach of the arrival gate. Uh, to get in on the action, Saudi Arabia is adding a second carrier, uh, Riyadh Air, uh, aiming to triple arrivals into the kingdom uh, and siphon business uh, and tourists from competitors. Uh, While well, the plan is short on details, uh, the carrier aims to start flying in 2025 with planes bathed in blue and lavender. Uh, the company declines to say uh, whether alcohol is will uh, be available on its aircraft, doing only that it will operate within Saudi law. Saudi will continue to focus on religious pilgrims on uh, Hajj uh, and Umrah. And Riyadh Air plans to reach 100 destinations by 2030, connecting passengers to King Solomon International Airport, a sprawling new facility rising in the desert, and a capital that's designed to handle 120 million passengers a year by the end of the decade. 30% more than Dubai's current capacity. The goal is to tempt them to stay for business meetings or jaunts to the country's monuments, mountains, and beaches. Uh, the moves are part of a wider effort by Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman uh, to diversify the economy beyond oil uh, with soft power investments in sports, entertainment, and tourism. Uh, but you get getting the masses to visit a, a hot, dusty land where liquor isn't served is, uh, is a tough sell, no matter how luxurious the planes. And while uh, there's no doubt that Saudi Arabia has the means and resources to pull into building out its tourism industry, it doesn't mean it will be easy. Uh, says John Strickland, an analyst at uh, uh, JLS Consulting in, uh, in London, uh, the Yacht Air uh, will be uh, going up against uh, Qatar and Emirates, uh, which has spent years uh, building their business models. Uh, As the focus changes from pilgrims to leisure travelers, the Saudis plan to add a low-cost carrier flying from Dammam, the center of the country's oil industry, and another new full-service airline based in Niam, a futuristic city under construction on the Red Sea coast. The aviation push directly supports the industries that are essential to the kingdom's A Vision 2030 agenda, including tourism. Says Mohammed al Karazi, Vice President for Strategy, at the Kingdom's General Authority of Civil Aviation. And Sydney Emirates and Turkish Airlines are stocking up on uh, wide-body jets for the next phase of growth, uh, crowding an already tough market. Riyadh Air will struggle to get takeoff in the landing slots at big airports abroad. Emirates pumps a half dozen A380 Super Jumbos into London's Heathrow Airport every day, where slots are scarce. And Dubai has long established itself in glamorous destination for party-loving globetrotters with theme parks, the world's tallest building, and the lax social etiquette that allows alcohol, nightclubs, and fewer restrictions for women. Uh, even piles of cash uh, don't necessarily spell success, as Douglas's previous employer, Etihad, can attest. Uh, a few years ago, the Abu Dhabi flag carrier spent lavishly on a fleet expansion and in-flight perks such as multi-room suites dubbed the residents aboard its A380s. At the same time, it bought big stakes in ailing carriers from a half dozen countries, including Germany, India, and Italy, to funnel more traffic 
through the new hub. After the strategy imploded and losses piled up, Douglas was brought in to clean up his mess. He says his time there will inform his strategy at Riyadh Air, where he aims to focus on serving locals as much as foreigners. We always learn important lessons from every experience, he says. We aim to attract visitors to the kingdom and also serve the huge local Saudi population.